Hi guys, welcome to Wednesday Night Service. We're honored to be with you, to have you a part of today's service. We look forward to the days where we can get back to normal, but you know what? This could be normal for quite some time. So uh, we're just honored to have you join us this evening. Let's open up in prayer, please, and then we'll go to worship. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you so much for your precious Holy Spirit and your presence with us. We ask you to open our eyes that we may see, our ears to hear, our heart to understand, and Father God, the courage to follow out your ways and your plans for our life. Father God, make us sensitive to the worship that is now coming, and may we enter into your presence and then receive of you the very things that we have need of, and we thank you. Thank you so much for your presence. Now, guys, if you don't mind, man, just share a little bit with your friends and neighbors that church is happening right now and be an evangelist, be a missionary, and get the word out. Like the message, get out there and get things ready, and uh, let's go to worship. So we'll see you in a moment.
Guys, welcome back. Let's just take a moment and honor the Lord. Just give, um, just give place to the Holy Spirit now and see what the Spirit of God may be saying to you right now. And just look, treasure what He tells you. Honor that moment because worship makes your heart tender. And now the Spirit of God wants to speak to you. So Holy Spirit, we give place to you right now. Have your way in us. Give us revelation life. Give us insight to the very things you have for us. And we thank you for that in Jesus' mighty name. I want you to take a moment and pray for those around you. If you're by yourself, lay your hands on yourself. If you're with family, I want you to take someone's hand and just be a blessing to them. Come on. Some people are afraid right now. They're anxious. They're concerned about the times we live in. And I want you to just to come into agreement with them that the Lord reigns and that you are part of something wonderful in their life right now. Be a blessing. So, Father, we thank you for this. In Jesus' name, the grace of God now flowing through our, our, our hands, our lives, our, our voice, our prayers. And we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Well, guys, guess what? It's offering time. And we're honored that you would even consider being a part of the financial support team of Thibodeau Family Church. But if it, it's on your heart and the Lord lays it um, on you to move in this area, go to the website real quickly. Go to ThibodeauFamilyChurch.com and, and uh, give. And if you don't want to go right now, at the end of the show, go there and just support and be a part of it. And uh, God will bless you. He always does. And we want to thank you for your generous contribution. So we'll see you in a moment. Welcome back. Just want to take a moment to say once again, thank you for your generosity and your participation in Thibodeau Family Church. We're really and truly are honored. Now, please let me make this announcement that we do have permission to have church again. And so over the last couple of weeks, we have had service outside and it's been wonderful. We really have had a great time. And we want to make sure that you're aware that this Sunday we'll have church on the grounds again. We're trying to make a determination whether we want to do it outside or inside. We're really waiting on some final insight to the expectations of the state and how they want us to conduct inside services. So we may, if weather permits, have another outside service just to make sure that we can accommodate their desires to provide you with a very safe atmosphere. But no matter what, you're gonna to come to Thibodeau Family Church and it will be safe. First of all, Jesus is Lord, and we pray over our building and our ministry partners, and I just believe, God, that we're going to be fine. We're going to be well protected because of Him, but we're also going to follow the guidelines, and so we're going to make sure that we're capable of doing that. So with that said, if um, more than likely we'll have church outside, so bring your lawn chairs, bring your Bibles, uh, bring some uh, umbrellas, whatever you may need to feel comfortable. We're going to keep our social distancing. Uh, be very aware of each other's feelings, so don't crowd anybody's space. Don't uh, try to try to stay away from hugging and, you know, just the things that we do. Um, just be very cautious of one another. We don't want to offend anybody, but we're happy that we can have church together and see each other, and uh, we look forward to seeing you this coming Sunday at 10 o'clock. Over the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about developing a strong spirit, and then we've been incorporating different um, subject matters that go along with that to help us um, follow up the, the development of a strong spirit with a character trait. So let me just remind you that our text comes from Proverbs 18, 14, where the Word of God says, the strong spirit of a man sustains him in bodily pain or trouble. So the strong spirit of a man sustains you no matter what you're faced with, but a weak and broken spirit, who can raise up or bear? So there's a very sharp distinction between the strong spirit that lifts you up, bears you up, 
and then the weak spirit that needs to be raised up and the question is who can do it well the good thing is that we know jesus can but there's a responsibility that we have to pursue and the chase after the strong spirit so i want to uh, reiterate that i believe it is our job to develop the inward man which is the development of the power plant of the kingdom of god inside of you it's the development of your heart it's the development of your spirit and so we we said this last week that ezekiel chapter 16 verse 30 there was a question that was raised before the people of god by the spirit of god that says how weak is your heart seeing that you do the things that they were doing and there was a if you read that text, the whole chapter, it really reflects that the children of Israel were acting like harlots. They had lost their direction. They acted as if they weren't in covenant with God. And God says that that was because their heart was weak. So there has to be some indicators. Like, like for an example, if you're driving down the road and, you, and your um, dashboard begins to blink a light of a, a troubled spot in your automobile, that's an indicator that there's trouble and you need to service your car in some fashion. I know most of the time, what we'll see is the indication of come up low tire pressure. That just tells you you need to have your, either your tire checked or inflate your tires, but it's an indicator that their service needs to be done. So how do we know whether or not we're dealing with uh, a weak spirit? So here's some things we talked about last week, that you live life and you're overwhelmed. That's an indicator where just you just make too much out of little things. That was number one. Number two, you're always faced with a mindset and an attitude of hopelessness where you just lack joy and you're discouraged. And the third thing is just you're self-centered. It's all about you. There's no compassion. And then on the other hand, you're more, in, um, more likely to have a victim mindset. So today what we want to talk about, the other few things we want to look at as far as the indicators, a couple more, is that number one, uh, a weak spirit is a complacent person. You're indecisive and indifferent, many times double-minded, and you just have a tendency to always err on the wrong side. You make bad decisions. And so the stronger you are, then you realize the more bold you are, and the more focused you are to be decisive when it comes to your walk with God. So if you're just wishy-washy in your walk with Jesus and you like playing both sides of the fence, you need, you need to get your spirit strong. You need to really dive into the Spirit of God. One of the cool things about Abraham's life is that in Romans chapter 4 verse 20 through 21 the Word of God says that Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief he had no trouble believing God but was strong in faith giving glory to God now I think that that term right there giving glory to God is an indicator that there was strong faith because when he got the promise of God and he believed the promise of God, then his praise began to pour out of him and thanksgiving became a fruit of his life. So he was fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was also able to perform it. So number one tonight, how do I know if I'm, if I'm de dealing with a weak spirit, well, I'm complacent. The second point tonight, which would be like our, our fourth, let's see, our, our fifth um, indicator is that I'm short-tempered. So when you're touchy, you are offended, overly sensitive, you find yourself out of control, angry, and sometimes even in a rage, it's because you are weak in spirit. Proverbs 16 verse 32 tells us, He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. Now listen, when you're slow to anger, in other words, you have control over your life. You, you're, not, you're not weak in spirit. You are mightier, better than the mighty. And he who rules his spirit you're better, mightier, stronger than one who can take a city. So he tells you right here that the heart is huge in being very decisive in life. 
So the stronger you are, the more con- spirit controlled you will be every day of your life. So those are the two points we're going to deal with today. And what we're going to do is next week we'll look at two more. So at the end, what we're going to look at totally is going to be seven indicators. But for tonight's study, complacency. So if you see that you're complacent in life or short-tempered in life, it's time to dive in a little deeper into the presence of the Lord and uh, go all out for Jesus. So to develop now the, the character or the kingdom quality that we're looking for, because um, we're building blocks now. I want to talk to you today about honoring the Word of God. I want to talk to you about the significance of loving Jesus. You know, Jesus is the Word and the Word made flesh. The Bible says that He lived among us and we beheld the glory of the only begotten Son. So when you say that you love Jesus, then you have to love His Word. But in tonight's study, we're going to go a little bit deeper. You've got to love the law, or in other words, the commandments of God. Because the commandments of God are really God's um, decisions on life. And I know that we have a tendency to struggle with the law because it seems that the law puts us in bondage. But when you love Jesus, you're liberated and empowered by the Holy Ghost to be able to fulfill the law. So we find in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 through 18, Jesus says, think not. So he tells you, do not give yourself the opportunity to consider this, that Jesus came to destroy the law or the prophets. He says, I am not come to destroy. He didn't come to destroy. He came to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all is fulfilled. So we find this statement, Jesus came to fulfill and this word, this law is going to be in place until it's all fulfilled. So that means that there's a responsibility. That, that Jesus has to strengthen the life of the believer, which he does by the Holy Spirit and by the Word of God, to fulfill the Word of God completely. And so we have to be about our Father's business likewise to do our very, very best. So Jesus came to fulfill the law, and the law of God has three essential elements. It has the king, the king's laws, and it also has obedient citizens. So we know that in the kingdom of God, we have a king. You know who his name is? Of course. His name is Jesus. He is Jesus. And the king has a method of living. And then the method of living is given to the citizens, which we are members of the kingdom. And our job is to be obedient to the kingdom of God and the ways of the kingdom. So what is the law of God? So the law of God is really the mind of God. But it represents also the love of God because He reveals the ways to live. He reveals to us the ways for us to prosper and to be in health. So the way that you do that is to prosper in your soul, to have a a strong spirit. So the Word of God now has the availability to make you strong. And so the, the, the Word of God is not there to reveal um the evil of the law but what it does it teaches us how to love God and to love one another so God is there to represent to us personally the ability and the grace to to flow in the most powerful force in the whole universe and that's love God himself for God is love and so now we're we're empowered by God to fulfill the royal law of love I love that fact That Jesus is empowering every one of us to fulfill love, both for him and for one another. And the law of God is fulfilled through the person of Jesus Christ. So Jesus fulfilled the law, but yet we still carry on the fulfilling of. In other words, we are empowered by God to continue this love walk, to fulfill the commands of God. 
And so the laws of God are founded in the Old Testament, but they're expounded in the New Testament. So what we find is that Moses represented the written law of God, which would be like man's um, religion, which makes these laws impossible to reach. So in the Old Testament, these things, the laws of God, were really out of reach. It, it, if you read the book of Romans, you'll find out real quickly that without Jesus and the Holy Ghost, it's impossible to come close to fulfilling anything. But Jesus, because he did, and now that he lives in us, now we are able to fulfill the commandments of God. So Jesus represents the living law of God, God's way of doing and being right, establishes a relationship with God who reaches for us through the life and the way of Jesus. In other words, everything is now flowing through God's way of being and doing what is right. Being and doing what is right now establishes a relationship with God. So God's laws are permanent, irreversible. And so his laws can only be fulfilled in every aspect of the laws of God are beautiful and they're a picture of Jesus and the work of Christ. And so the kingdom quality that we're looking for in honoring the laws of God is love. I love God, so I pursue his presence. He loves me, so he pursues me. And he empowers me to be able to live the life that now he knows we can live. So the scripture makes it abundantly clear that no one can be saved by the works of the law because it's impossible to keep the law. We know this in Galatians 2 verse 16, knowing that a man is not justified by works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law, but by the works of uh, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So the works of the law equals my attempt to be perfectly holy, which then produces pride because I'm working for myself to accomplish these gold. And we know that when we can't, it produces discouragement and a, a defeat mindset. And that leads to a weak spirit. So what we're trying to work on is developing this strong spirit, following the love of God, flowing in the love of God, so that now the words, the revelation, the spirit of the law is revealed in Jesus Christ, by Jesus Christ, and by humility, by humbling myself to the Lordship of Jesus, I am now encouraged, not discouraged. So by words of revelation, by honoring God's word, living by the spirit of God and the spirit of the law, then all of a sudden Christ is revealed to every believer and we humbly walk before God with a strong spirit. And so the letter of the law kills, but the spirit of, the law, the spirit of life gives life. So let me just... Um, conclude this study with this is just this simple thought our ambition in life is to be loved and is to is to find love and then to be loved and so when i honor god i honor his ways i honor his practices and so tonight i want to encourage you in the aspect of developing a strong spirit if you find the indicators of weakness, here's a remedy. Honor God's word. Not the law of trying to be self-righteous, but humbly submitting yourself under the lordship of Jesus and in doing so, finding strength in your spirit. So guys, I want to tell you how much I love you. Thank you for being a part of our service tonight. Remember, we're working on developing a strong spirit and we do that by developing kingdom qualities, characteristics. And tonight's characteristic or quality is honoring the law of God, the word of God. So let's take a moment and pray. 
Father, in Jesus' name, we're so grateful for the opportunity to gather here with you. We ask you to bless our time together. Father God, to take these words and, and really help build a foundation where our lives are transformed by your word. We thank you for revelation, knowledge, and insight. And thank you, Father God, for the ability to love and be loved. And from this day forward, we're going to walk in love and we're going to move forward into great and mighty things in the mighty name of Jesus. So guys, we are so thrilled to be with you. Always remember that we're here for you. We love you. If you ever need anything, you just need to contact Thibodeau Family Church. We'll make sure that we reach back out and get a hold of you. Sunday mornings, we'll have church at 10 o'clock, 785 North Canal Boulevard. We'd love to have you come and join with us. If not, stay in touch. We're going to have things online. Uh, we're working on some equipment right now to begin to do Facebook Live. So we're moving to some new things that we're going to have church. Um, and while it's being done live, we're able to carry it live online. So that equipment is ordered and is coming in. And so we'll begin working on that. But until then, we're going to do our best to still provide you with two services, one on the grounds and one online, because we want to develop an online community, and we're so happy that you're with us. So guys, we love you. Have a great evening, and we'll see you Sunday morning. Please stay in touch with us through our text messages. I'll get information out to you. If you're not getting information by text, that means you haven't signed up. So please do so. We love you, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.